five lies you believe about other people's finances as they approach retirement or as they're in retirement. Five lies that I found people believe. I want to talk about them a little bit here. First of all, got Gro Grogu back on the shelf up here. Uh, <laughs> uh, for about a year, I was a retirement coach. I felt that there was a great need in the community for somebody just to talk to about the transition to retirement. People ran their plans by me. I did not give any advice. I just highlighted things that I was concerned about. Um, no investment advice, anything like that. But I stopped doing that due to overwhelming demand. But I did actually talk to about 300 people. I stopped this uh, a year ago in August. So this was invaluable information to me around what's really out there uh, and what are real people retiring worried about, stressed about, what are they doing well, not, not so well. Plus, I've had maybe 200 emails <laughs> with people's retirement plans that they've uh, sent me and just life discussions uh, as during my travels. So I got a lot of um, people, let's say 500 uh, sources of information here. And that's where the five lies came from. Hold on to the end. I got an exciting, an exciting announcement about a certified financial planner them reviewing your plan for a nominal fee. I got that coming up. Get, and we're really close to it. I've been working on it for 18 months, and this is a trial. This is a trial based on my word that says there's a lot of demand out there. So hold on. We're going to talk about that more at the end. So what are these five lies? No particular order, just the order that I recalled them. Number one, if you have 500000 or $5 million, you have the same stress, the same needs for planning, you use the same planning tools, and you need the same advice, expert advice. People are, believe that, hey, I only have $300,000. If I had $3 million, life would be so much better. I'm telling you, lifestyle creep and expenses really... Uh, you know, really uh, make the experience from a stress and worry standpoint the same. I'm not tr trying to tell you that living in a $200,000 house is the same as living in an $800,000 house. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the worry and stress going into the retirement is identical. I could not tell a difference. This is from over 300. Well, I already talked about that. Uh, expenses make the difference. Lifestyle creep. Everyone is scared. Everyone takes the leap into the unknown. Everyone thinks working one more year is going to uh, help them. Everybody gets stuck on that treadmill of one more year. Uh, they use the same tools. Most of the people that I interacted with used uh, New Retirement slash Bolden. The new name is Bolden, B-O-L-D-I-N. I got a link to that. It's the one I use. My financial plan in retirement is Bolden. First link below, get a free two weeks. Um, expect to love it. 40% uh, of the people that click on that link and sign up for the free two weeks end up buying it $120 a year. Uh, some of the people, I would say maybe 15%, had a certified financial planner give them a plan for about $9,000, eight, dollars $9,000, very expensive uh, plan. Uh, and then they had me look at that plan and see if I was concerned about anything and told them to look into something that bothered me, not giving advice, just saying, I'm not happy. I'm not, that causes me to stress. Uh, and many of you know, I, uh, my certified financial planner is Neil Fort Wendell. His information is below. Uh, uh, I've been working on him for a while and he's got a, a package for around $3,500 to do a certified financial planner plan. $3,500 gets you the plan. And that's an estimate. It depends on how complicated you are. So if you're more complicated, maybe a little bit more than that. If you're simpler, maybe a little less. Um, but to, uh, he'll give you engagement uh, emails and uh, phone calls and uh, virtual calls, things like that for a full year with that $3,500 estimate. 
both of these people, the last two, Bolden and Neil, they give me a promoter fee uh, at no cost to you for promoting uh, two products that I use myself, okay? So I, I don't promote anything I don't use uh, or highly, highly recommend. Uh, so number one was, hey, if you got 500,000 or 5 million, your stresses are the same, the same, okay? Uh, that, that's pretty difficult for a lot of people to get their hands, their heads around. Number two, you have judgments that they have money, okay? A lot of people are living a Facebook life. Uh, they may live in on, be living on credit cards, high debt, and they be, may be working forever. So you're looking at these people, they may, you may in your mind think, oh boy, everybody's retiring but me. And you may see that these people are, um, the decisions that they've made, some of the luck that they have had is going to make them work till they're 70, 75 years old. So don't assume everybody has money. You know, and comparing really doesn't do any good. Everybody spends money differently, you know, all these videos out there on how much I need to retire, those are worthless. Those are worthless. I don't, I don't know why they're so popular. Um, it's all about you, your spending, your risk profile, and what you are retiring to. It's very, very personal. So number three, those with $2 million, pick a number, three, five, just say millions, have secret tax loopholes and investments that make them wealthy. Having a business helps. Um, you know, I'm able to deduct this office, you know, uh, my computer, um, any video equipment, which this is, this is an iPhone 13 that you're seeing this on, um, my Wi-Fi, uh, things like that I'm able to deduct. Uh, but when you have a business, you pay a lot of taxes, self-employment tax. You know, people complain about paying, what is it, like 7.5% is your FICA. Well, when you own your own business, you're paying 15. You're paying double that, both sides of that. Uh, your employer's paying seven and a half. You're paying seven and a half if you're a W-2 employee. As a business, you pay 15% plus federal and state taxes on top of that. So it could be 40% taxes you're paying. So, you know, getting a write-off means that because you bought it for the business, you can take 40 cents of every dollar off. You still have to pay the 60%. And it's a business expense because you have a business. So um, I'm not aware <laughs> of any big uh, loopholes that uh, um, that people with millions have. Now, maybe when you get above, you know, 30 million, it, it's different. But I, the uh, clients that I talk to as far as um, uh, retirement and coaching, I'm telling you, if people had $10 million or if they had... Ten, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. It was all the same conversation. Investments are identical. Most people do the S and P five hundred index fund. They use a Vanguard dividend fund. They have some bond funds. A few people will have, you know, maybe up to ten percent in individual stocks. Like, hey, they own the Magnificent Seven, you know, stocks. They own up to ten percent total of those, not ten percent each. Ten percent total, but you can't tell the difference between somebody with 500,000 and 5 million by their investments. It, it doesn't look that different. There's no club to join once you have a million dollars that gives you 20% fixed returns. It, it, there's, that doesn't exist, so stop believing that. Number four, retirees are bored and regret retirement. I hear all about them. I read about them. Uh, I just haven't met one. Maybe they're unicorns, so uh, maybe they exist, maybe they don't. I have not found a single person that's regretted their retirement or said they were bored. So maybe they're your neighbors, uh, but they're, uh, they're not here in Southern Indiana and I just haven't encountered them. Number five, they're really still working. They're really still working. They retired, they said they retired, but they're really still working. They work at a winery as uh, a you know, person giving out samples of wine. They referee girls soccer and get paid for that. Uh, or they invest three hours a week into making YouTube videos as a hobby. So here's a question for you. I'd love to get your response to this. Okay, this is real, very real, okay? 
My wife volunteers eight hours a week at a church con consignment store. Confinement. <laughs> consignment store. This is where people donate materials to purses, jackets, shoes, clothes, you know, exercise equipment, and then they sell it. And the proceeds go to donations to the poor. Poor people can get a voucher to come in and get free stuff. Okay, so she works there completely voluntary, uh, but eight hours a week. She has shifts on a calendar, okay? Now, she can ask off, but it's like she's got the one to four shift or the, um, you know, the 10 to two shift, something like that. So that's part A. I work three hours a week producing YouTube videos, providing the story of my retirement. I'm just telling a story of, you know, one thing I'm an expert in, my life. Um, I'm not giving advice, but I'm trying to be a guide perhaps for others to uh, you know, go through my experience, may help you with your experience. Uh, but I get paid, YouTube pays me. I work somewhere between zero and five hours a week. I average three and it's all up to me when I work. I can create videos any time of day, seven in the morning, seven at night. I take off for weeks at a time. I may take off two, three weeks from making any videos. If you see videos regularly, sometimes I tape them and, or tape them. I record them and release them in advance. I do that typically when I go, when I travel. Uh, like when I went to Alaska, I pre-made like four videos. Uh, and I love helping others. This is the part of the job when I was working as a W-2 employee, I loved helping and coaching others, especially the next generation. Here's how to be a better maintenance manager. Here's how to be a better leader. Here's what I've learned about being a maintenance engineer or reliability engineer and passing on those hard knocks and hard lessons that I've learned to them. And I get to do that through YouTube. I love doing it and YouTube pays me. So which one of these is work? Am I working or is my wife working? Or are we both working? One thing that people get screwed up in retirement is and I'm not trying to justify what I'm doing. I'm just saying I get accused of working all the time and I'm like, okay, I guess I am working, is you got to do something with your time. If I was sitting 10 hours a day watching TV on the couch, that's not work. <laughs> and I, I think a, for me and my values, that's a complete waste of time. I watch less TV in retirement. But anyway, off my soapbox, okay? Um, it's a hobby I love and it pays, so great. Um, one of the things it allows us to do is, you know, it allows us to donate more. I just donated 10% of my YouTube earnings for the year, donated them to the parks of the little town that I live in, donated it to a park to build a, a playground. I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't earn YouTube revenue. So how many of these five did you get? Do you believe? Do you believe? You know, $500,000 has the same stress as having 5 million. Everybody's got money but me. Those with $2 million have secret tax loopholes and secret investments that make them wealthy. Retirees are bored. And these people are actually working. They need the money from coaching girls soccer. They're really still working. That's not a hobby. And then the, the people doing it will say, it's a hobby that I love doing and I love helping out. Same thing I would say. So which one of those did you believe? Um, I've been, why, why are these believed? Do I, you know, I've actually pressed a few people on this. Once I got to know them, pressed them, asked them some challenging questions. In the end, it comes down to justifying current state of their finances and the actions they're making. It's, it's, Excuse is a harsh word, but it's in that neighborhood. It's rubbing up against excuse. So, um, you know, my coaching on addressing finances in retirement is don't look at anybody else, look at you. Use a, the software like Bolden, supplement that with your t uh, spreadsheets, supplement that with maybe a certified financial planner and, and do it customized to you Forget about everybody else because you don't know everybody else's situation. You do not know it. It's a waste of time. It just causes stress and worry and excuses in your life. That's my three cents. Now, hey, on to my 
announcement. November 3rd of this year, so just a week or so out, we're looking at uh, offering a review of your plan. So you provide a plan to a certified financial planner. They'll set up a phone call with you. You'll get, they'll, they have a secure website to put information on to. Uh, so put it there, they'll review it with you on a phone call or uh, a Zoom call. They'll do that for you. Uh, and it's a new offering for this company. Very low fee. We're still working on the, the fee, okay? I'm, I'm, we, we want that to be very modest, okay? And I, I, I don't want to say it that is, but I believe it's going to be very nominal for you. Uh, and it's something I've been working on for 18 months. I've gotten a heck of a lot of no's from people on this. And I, I'm saying the audience that listens to me wants this desperately to have some professional review of their plan for a very nominal fee. And I've got a, I've got a company that is, I'm just this close. They estimate we're going to be go time on November 3rd. And so then I'll, I'll make a video that day uh, to get in early. This is going to be a trial, okay? Depending on the demand. I've sold, the demand is there. So uh, get in early because I'm not sure how long they're going to do this. Uh, I'm thinking it's it's going to be a great um, opportunity for them and for you to have somebody uh, with a lot of experience look at your plan in about an hour and say, hey, you need to shore up this, shore up this, shore up this. I, you know, they're not going to, it's not a comprehensive plan, but it's a professional sounding board to say, are you missing anything big? So look for that coming up around November 3rd. All right. This Joe out.